Thank you all again for joining today. Uh, I am Fernando Maldonado. I lead the digital finance team in uh, the Development, Democracy, and Innovation Bureau, DDI, within the Innovation Technology and Research Hub. Um, we're, we're getting used to the new vernacular given the transition that took place uh, uh, over the fall. Um, I'm thrilled to be your host today alongside my colleague and today's moderator, uh, Diana boncheva Guli, um, who recently joined my team as a Senior Digital Finance Advisor. Um, before getting started, I want to just quickly remind you of a couple items. Um, as you know, mentioned earlier, if you're in WebEx, um, I encourage you to please introduce yourself in the chat box. Um, we'll, we will also be collecting questions via chat box throughout the session. Um, so please don't hesitate to ask uh, questions as they come up. We'll do our best to get to those questions um, as much as we can. Um, however, if we don't get to yours, um, the good folks here at Market Links will help us follow up. Um, if you are not on WebEx and you're calling in, um, you can find the link to today's slides uh, in our calendar invite. Um, you are also welcome to email questions to globalpartnerships at USA.gov. That's global partnerships altogether um, at USA.gov. Lastly, this webinar is being recorded, um, so if there's anything you missed or want to reference, you'll be able to go back. Um, great. So switching gears um, here for a bit, um, as you can see here, I'll begin today's session with just a very brief introduction to the topic before handing it over to Diana, who will introduce our fantastic panel and lead us in a discussion um, with the panelists representing financial services providers from three different markets around the world, Jordan, Bangladesh, and Cambodia, all supporting government-led social assistance programs in their respective countries. Um, our wonderful panelists will share their experience while we navigate questions from the audience. We'll have, we, we will also, at the end, have um, a dedicated uh, Q&A session. Next slide, please. Great. So let's begin by defining social assistance payments. Um, here we are referring to you know, cash or financial aid distributed by governments or humanitarian agencies to help individuals and households address their basic needs. Uh, delivery of social assistance can take many forms, ranging from vouchers or fee waivers for the purchase of goods and, ser and services um, or through physical or digital financial transfer. Social assistance payments include things like cash transfers, cash and voucher assistance, and government to person payments. For the purposes of today's discussion, we're focused on government to person or G2P uh, programs that are being delivered digitally. Next slide, please. Um, so I want to speak a little bit about the trends. Uh, obviously, we're, we're all living here uh, through, through a pandemic, um, and amid the COVID-19 pandemic, we've seen a notable uptick in social assistance by governments and humanitarian agencies to mitigate economic shock and help prevent further backsliding into poverty by low-income populations. Um, our, our very own government is no stranger to that, um, of course, with uh, the relief package that was recently passed. Uh, as of December 11th, a total of 166 countries or territories have planned or implemented 429 cash transfer cash transfer social protection measures um, that are benefiting approximately 1.5 billion people around the world. Um, if you look just at the number of social assistance programs, this includes both cash transfers as well as in-kind, um, you'll see an increase of 20% uh, since September of last year. Next slide, please. The other trend that we've seen is um, is the use of digital payments. So digital payments have emerged as a desirable channel to deliver that assistance. In large part, this is due to the mobile and traceable nature of digital payments. Um, and all this, coupled with easing of regulation, has generated some really interesting insights. Uh, a couple examples include uh, Colombia, where authorities have been able to reach 1.6 million families through more than 20 financial institutions by incorporating tiered and remote customer onboarding this, for example, includes um, simplified accounts um, that require a national ID, has a national ID number, place of birth, uh, full name, um, to open an account. Uh, the other thing that has helped uh, in this particular case is data sharing protocols. So this is information exchange in the case of Columbia between 
different market actors or financial service providers um, that has allowed um, sort of easy onboarding of, of new customers. Um, and then lastly, the leveraging of regulatory changes that allow for non-bank payment service provision. Another example is out of India, um, where the government uh, has reached 200 million account holders um, of the government's financial inclusion program. Um, they received account-based payments um, following um, the, on the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, in Kenya, the government has developed a tier pricing structure that provides incentives to payment providers in the form of higher fees for access points that are located in remote and underserved parts of the country. Next slide, please. And while you know, these cases are very exciting, of course, from a digital standpoint, um, you know, there's a lot of excitement and enthusiasm around um, this trend and, and the potential for leapfrog, leapfrogging, certainly from USAID's perspective and our goal uh, to support reliable digital ecosystems as reflected in our agency's digital strategy, we can certainly celebrate these positive trends toward enhanced scalability and reach. However, it's important to also acknowledge the realities of certain market conditions that may or may not boast things, for example, like digital payment infrastructure or national ID systems, as in the case of India, um, or even the same regulatory framework that allows for information exchange and ease of onboarding, as in the case of Colombia. All this to say that all, all markets are not the same. So this brings me to our discussion today and why we are so excited to hear from our panelists who will provide a unique perspective from their vantage point as financial service providers supporting government social assistance programs. Um, so I thank you for your attendance uh, and joining us. I look forward to your questions and comments. Um, and with that, without further ado, I, I'm gonna hand it over to Diana uh, to introduce our, our, our panel. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you, Fernando. And uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the panel discussion. So please, please welcome our speakers today. We have Maha Bahu. She's the CEO of JOPAC, or Jordan Payments and Clearing Company. We also have uh, Mr. Shikder. He's the Deputy Managing Director and COO of Dutch Bangle Bank. And we also have, last but not least, uh, PK Batanak Chu. He is the Chief Corporate Business Officer at Wing Cambodia. Welcome, everyone. Uh, so our first question, I would really um, like to begin with a quick background on your company. Um, if you can please introduce the company and the services that you offer. Um, maybe we can begin with PK, please. Okay, um, thank you. And um, I don't know, I should, you know, say three uh, greeting words, you know, good morning, good afternoon, and, you know, good evening, uh, because we have been, you know, speaking to many different countries across the globe. And also good night to all my fellow Cambodian as well, ladies and gentlemen. Very good mornings. I have to follow the US time. <laughs> um, so my name is Chun uh, Watanak, but as uh, Diana called me PK, uh, which is more comfortable to call PK. So I've been working with Wing for over eight years, and I represent Wing Cambodian Limited Specialized Bank. And I work across um, in many different you know, industry, including, you know, starting from, you know, advertising agency, um, I moved to fast moving consumer goods as a marketing and also financial institution and a few roles as well in, 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 in the financial institution. Uh, institution. Um, so my current job, I, I work with Wing as a, as a chief corporate business officer and I res are responsible in terms of the, uh, partnership with both private and, and government sectors uh, to provide sort of the payment solution. So I, I would also uh, introduce a little bit in terms of WING. So WING has been granted a, a banking license under Specialized and focus on, on the payment. So we offer all, you know, sort of payment solution, including um, most international and local money transfer. So basically you can send inbound and I want for over country across the globe. And also we have um, utility payments, uh, we have payrolls and fund disbursement solution. I think uh, today we will touch in terms of the social um, uh, social protection payments or fund disbursement to support the communities. And um, we have air, airtime pop-ups. We also have the B2B and C2B 
uh, payment solution. And and I think um, for the past six months, we have launched a micro lending and also micro savings to the um, to those uh, underserved. And last but not least, um, we managed to launch the e-commerce platform and also food delivery in the country. Um, so that has been my honor to be part of you know this um, discussion on this topic today. And thank you, Diana. Uh, thank you. Okay. Uh, can you just mention um, how many agents do you have? Uh, in Cambodia, we have over 9,000 agents and uh, it's still counting because every day uh, we have received the application uh, from, um, you know, uh, who submit that um, every day. And in average, we open, I think, uh, over 100 um, agents every month. Great. Thank you. Um, thank you. Um, now maybe we can have uh, Maha introduce herself in Jopak. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone. I'm Mahabahu, the CEO of Jordan Payments and Clearing Company. It's a public-private, not-for-profit-making company owned by the Central Bank of Jordan and all banks operating in Jordan. We have five systems that are uh, retail and micropayment systems with, uh, working as a clearing house as well for all of them. Jomo Pay, Jordan Mobile Payments, which Click, which is uh, the instant payment transfer a solution, automated clearing house, and uh, electronic bill presentment and payment system, and the electronic check clearing system. We as well uh, integrate all participants, direct and indirect participants, to our uh, five uh, main systems, banks, non-banks, financial institutions, Jonet, that is the switch for ATM, and the switch for point of sales, and e-commerce. Um, this is uh, mainly uh, the systems operated by JOPAC, but ultimate objective of JOPAC and our mandate is to support digital financial uh, services and infrastructure in the country to ensure full interoperability, inclusive and uh, uh, highly regulated uh, uh, infrastructure and services. Uh, one of our main focuses is gender, refugees and the poorest. Uh, we produce knowledge products and disseminate knowledge. The ultimate, ultimate objective of JOPAC is to support uh, digital financial inclusion and digital economy. Thanks for inviting me. I'm honored to be with you today. Oh, thank you, Maha. And uh, last, last but not least, um, Mr. Sheikh there. Yes, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, hello, uh, this is uh, Abedir Rahman Sigdar, uh, Deputy Managing Director and uh, Chief Operating Officer of Dutch Bangla Bank. Uh, I'm re representing uh, Dutch Bangla Bank as well as its mobile financial services called Rocket. Uh, both the brand is very popular in, in the country and uh, as far as the bank is concerned, we are one of the largest private commercial banks in Bangladesh. Uh, having uh, more than 200 uh, uh, branches. Uh, we have more than 1,200 uh, digital uh, kiosks, kind of mini branches. We have uh, more than 4,500 agent banking network across the country. And of course, we have uh, more mobile financial services. As far as the uh, mobile financial services is concerned, uh, our brand name is Rocket. Uh, Rocket is the la second largest uh, mobile financial services in the country, though we are the first uh, of its kind uh, who introduced uh, mobile financial services in the country in back in uh, 2011. We have around uh, 220.25 million uh, customers and uh, having uh, 2.8 uh, lakhs, which is like, you know, 1.8 million Asian networks in the country. And uh, we operate, uh, we have uh, 77 uh, <clears throat> area offices uh, to operate mobile financial services across the country. As far as the bank is concerned, we have around uh, more than 10 million uh, customers, banking customers, and uh, uh, having 
200, more than 200 branches and uh, more than 1,200, 1,200 uh, uh, digital branches. So this is all about the way we are running in the country. Uh, we have all the all kinds of uh, uh, payment channels and distribution channels uh, to in order to uh, render customer services or offer customer services. And uh, we have taken our banking service to the uh, customer's doorstep to our agent banking as well as uh, mobile financial services. So this is a, a short uh, introduction uh, from my, my side. And uh, once I will get the uh, opportunity, once again, I will uh, tell more about our other services and other uh, initiatives. Thank you so much. Thank you, Shigri Bai. Uh, I still haven't learned the, the LAC version to 2000. <laughs> uh, uh, can you have the next slide, please? Great, so we'll, we'll begin with, with our discussion. And uh, our first question is, well, second question is, if you can please tell us about the social assistance payments that you have disbursed since the beginning of COVID. So uh, who are the target customers? How did you do the disbursement? Any KYC onboarding, interesting information that you could share. Um, and uh, we could begin, let's begin with uh, Maha this time. Thank you. Uh, in Jordan, actually, we have several uh, cash assistance and uh, payment assistance, but uh, the main uh, player is National Aid Fund. They distribute to people who are uh, under uh, poverty line, and they used to dis uh, disperse all payments in cash until uh, the following of uh, outbreak of uh, COVID-19 they found themselves uh, obliged to follow digital payments. So they all embraced uh, the digital financial services in distributing the uh, cash assistance um, uh, with uh, almost uh, 100 or 250,000 families impacted. The other one is Social Security Corporation who supported their subscribers who were negatively impacted by the COVID-19 and uh, suffered of that. We have Ministry of uh, Social Development as well. They all adopted our digital financial services. Adding to that, we have uh, the refugees through the UNSCR as well, but UNSCR started earlier than the government to adopt uh, digital financial services and the government, they uh, disturbed to uh, Palestinian refugees as well. So they all followed digital financial services. So this is for that. For the onboarding, uh, we started working on a national platform for EKYC and electronic customer due diligence, fully integrated with all federal and government agencies who publish data. And we have uh, legal support and legal framework to cover this with the compliance to GDPR, but unfortunately when uh, the uh, pandemic uh, hit the country, the solution was not ready. So we had to innovate how to do that with the assistance of the central bank who allowed us to do that. We relied on the KYC conducted by the government on their uh, beneficiaries, but we added to that an innov innovative platform where uh, subscribers uh, scan their national ID cards and they uh, provide us with, with their consent to open wallet. Then the uh, payment service provider were allowed it, uh, 48 hours to validate these uh, information with the government who, who hold the national uh, database. Uh, that's for the uh, onboarding uh, through uh, uh, the lockdown. Uh, JOPAC also innovated a platform, another platform that is, uh, has very comprehensive data and information for all people, educational material, awareness material, uh, and uh, informative. All uh, service providers information, the, loca the locations of the agents, the liquidity availability within the agent network, the prices, fees, everything with full transparency. Adding to that, because before the lockdown, 
people use to interface with the agents to uh, understand how to open the wallets, etc. So we uh, launched uh, educational uh, mobile wallets, that's a demo. So people not only watch uh, video or read material, so they can go through the full journey without real money. That was like an idea we got, we got from Monopoly, uh, the board game. Then we did another uh, video to explain the terms and conditions to people, animated videos in very simple language. So once they sign, I agree, it's usually we sign without reading. We at least wanted this most vulnerable segment of the population to understand, to know how to protect their credentials, how to, uh, to understand the role of the agent, etc. So we tried to do all these things that were developed in less than a month after the uh, outbreak of COVID-19, so people are more familiar with the services before starting. Thank you, thank you, Maha. This is fantastic, and especially the for me the, the educational mobile wallet. It's it's just so strong. A lot of women, in particular, they they are not as tech savvy as men, and they do appreciate the opportunity to to learn and do a tech transaction a tech transaction where they don't worry about sending the money to the wrong person. So this is so wonderful, and I would really love to hear um, maybe in a few months what the results are from that. Um, from that wallet. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, and, and just um, so, so you said you you were using existing information. So um, for to identify the customers that the money would go to, there were already registries, and you already had um, EKYC. So they, and they had IDs, right? So the, and you already had the existing distribution network. So those are the three pillars of uh, well, not three pillars, but if you have those three in place, it does help uh, with dispersing social assistance payments uh, more efficiently. Uh, if you're missing one of them, say, for example, um, EKYC, then it makes it much harder to uh, to disperse payments. Or if your country doesn't have a well-developed digital financial services uh, ecosystem, again, it, it makes it harder. So this is, um, this is great. Um, thank you. Um, and then let's see, next we can have um, uh, Mr. Schickter, maybe? Thank you. Uh, maybe there is a problem with his connection. Um, shall we have PK, please? Yes, um, I'm in. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Hello? Yes, yes, I hear you. Can you, can you talk about the social assistance payment disbursement that you did? Okay, I, I think um, when you talk about the social assistance or um, social protection, um, that I think it's mainly because of you know everyone put a complaint to the COVID-19 and I think um, every country around the world has been you know facing the challenge in terms of you know provide this sort of you know social assistance to mainly to the poor who have you know a low income. So in Cambodia is one of the country within the region who have been impacted by the COVID-19 and if I you know may recall back this COVID-19 outbreak has happened back in 2009, late 2009, and Cambodian has reported the first case imported in, in early January. And then, uh, you know, the government started to the tourist industry has been you know, direct impacts. Um, there's no more tourists coming.
and the Cambodia uh, royal government has um, taken, you know, um, a very, a very serious action in terms of how can we, you know, provide those, um, you know, supporting um, uh, funds to those who have, you know, um, who lost the job or I, I pro probably I don't use the word lost job. It has been suspended um, because some of the factory, you know, they they have no more, you know, buyers, uh, so that they put um, the the employee in, in in suspension period. So government has initiated and have a funds to support um, those who have been, you know, impacted. And I I also would like to, you know, uh, bring only one example. But before I, I mention, before I'm going to that, uh, you know, example, uh, I would like, you know, to say that Wing has been, you know privilege that has been chosen by the Royal, Gov uh, Royal Government of Cambodia to do the fund disbursement. Um, so basically, and why we have been chosen, I think, because of our reach, like, you know, Diana has mentioned earlier that we have the reach of nine, over 9,000 agents, you know, across Cambodia. I think every district, um, we have a wing agent basically as a point of, you know, a digital transaction. Okay. So, um, so this project has been implemented by the Ministry of Social Affairs and we call Mustavi um, on the poor ID. So basically in the poor ID, they identify, you know, poor ID one and poor ID two. Um, poor ID one, they refer into a very, very poor and poor ID two is a poor, but those uh, classification is still under the poverty line. That's why um, they call pool ID one and two. Um, and why they come up with this? Um, they, they conduct a census, I think back in the 2006, um, throughout the question and ask a lot of question, you know, as far as I know, probably ask, you know, their, their family members, their health condition, their living condition, um, you know, some sort of activities and employment. So all of those, you know, they put together and then they, they also give a rating either, you know, those family, uh, falling under one or two, okay? But regardless one or two, the government will still have to support all of those ones. So after the census, they create sort of a pool ID. Uh, in that pool ID, um, they have identified through a call, a hard papers, um, and then they print it out and, and hand over into the, the, the families uh, by the um, the chief of village or at the village office, you know, so they could just come and pick up those poor ID. So by saying that, we would be a I mean, from the government, they have already KYC all of those poor ID in the country, okay? So when this COVID came, um, they already have the data of the poor ID that need this social uh, payment, this social protection fund already in place. So what wing is coming in, we are, we have the platform, uh, of the disbursement, uh, digitally. And also we do have the reach of our wing agents across the country. So we put all of this. We have worked with the Mosavi, which is the ministry who running this project, uh, for less than a month to do the integration for the payment. And also, how does payment work? So basically, um, the Mosavi, they process this payment by themselves. They, they log into the, it's called a web portal, and then they upload all the list of these uh, pool ID into the system. And also, they can process through our platform, and, and then we will push that fund into a virtual account. Okay, when it's coming to the virtual account, we can add those Pool ID as, as a virtual account. So each of the fund disbursement will go into the, um, the virtual account. So that's how the, uh, fund disbursement, uh, has processed, uh, uh within, uh, I think about six, seven months or that we have been running this kind of project, uh, from the government. Oh, thank you. Thank you, PK. So in, in Cambodia, you have all the three pillars. As, as you said, you have the existing infrastructure, which is wing. Uh, Mosavi had already the existing registry, so the poor were already registered in an existing database, and then they had already done the KYC on them, so it was it was much easier to disperse these payments. 
Correct. Great. And uh, and uh, the ministry had to just send the send the transactions. They didn't even have to set, share any specific or sensitive data with with you. They just push the transactions yeah. from their own portal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we don't store any data, and um, the data has been stored at the Ministry of Planning. Basically, Ministry of Planning has been, you know, implemented this with the law standing NGO and some of the, you know, uh, the, the support from other countries to run this project. And lately, they just, you know, updating um, the data to make sure that probably there's more or less, you know, in terms of number of, um, you know, in terms of number of the, um, the poor ID. But one thing I, I forgot to mention as well, which I would like to highlight, um, probably as part of my introduction. So, you know, when I say, you know, 9,000, over 9,000 of our wing agents, 80% of them are women. Um, so this is a very important that wing has been this um, gender inclusion, but also we, you know, um, bring more new income, which is the additional income. Generally, you know, they, they would earn from this uh, wing business about, you know, between $550 to about $7 a month. And this is really good um, for them as part of the, you know, as in the country, it does help to the country economy. That's what I, I wanted to highlight uh, in terms of the uh, gender inclusion actually by wing as, as a payment. Uh, providers in in the country, one of the leading uh, payment providers in in, in the country. Oh, thank, thanks, TK. Uh, Wing is known world, worldwide for your uh, main women network. So thanks for reminding us. Um, let's see if Mr. Shikder can uh, go next. Uh, yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Diana. You now. Yes. Okay. So thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to say a few words on this. Uh, as far as the social assistance or uh, social safety net program is concerned in, uh, in Bangladesh, there are a uh, large number of initiatives uh, um, has been uh, already been taken by the government of Bangladesh. So uh, since we have started our journey in back in 2011, uh, we had the opportunity to uh, be associated with all the initiatives taken by uh, government under their social safety net or social protection program. There are uh, protection programs such as like uh, uh, video allowances, uh, disabled allowances, senior citizen allowances, worker salary, which is under a uh, stimulus uh, package, uh, stipend for the uh, mm -hmm. at uh, different levels, the primary education and higher education, uh, skill enhancement and improvement programs, uh, livelihood in, in involvement of all the poor community, wage earners, uh, dependent. So these are the initiatives uh, that has already been taken by the government of Bangladesh. And uh, we disperse uh, the allowances uh, to all the uh, recipients uh, selected by the uh, government. As far as the COVID is concerned, COVID has given us a very a new learning uh, new experience uh, uh, in in two 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 ways. One is like uh, during the COVID period, you know, we had to face a lot of difficulties and challenges, and particularly the destitute uh, in the country. As such, the uh, Prime Minister of Bangladesh, who uh, announced uh, to provide financial assistance uh, to five million destitute across the country in in different sectors. And uh, they have selected uh, four mobile financial service operators in the country to distribute uh, all the uh, payments within a very short possible time in last year. So we distributed 1.2 million, uh, um, uh, 1.2 million beneficiaries. Uh, and we had the time to acquire all the uh, customers uh, within a one month time. So within one month time, we had to acquire 1.2 million customers on board. And that was a very kind of uh, new experience for us and, you know, learning for us. On the other hand, the, you know, the uh, Bangladesh is one of the largest government exporting country. So during the COVID period, uh, the lot of government uh, was, uh, you know, out of uh, operation. And uh, they face a lot of challenges uh, in order to 
uh, served their uh, salaries and wages. And that's why the government of Bangladesh uh, announced the stimulus packages. So under the stimulus packages, uh, again, there are uh, 5 million, uh, around 5 million uh, governments working in the country. And we had to open accounts for them. Uh, and we only got three weeks time to open accounts of all the you know, government workers. And uh, since there are other uh, mobile financial service support in the country, so we rocket uh, distributed uh, around 1.5 uh, um, uh, number of uh, salaries. Are, uh, we acquired 1.5 billion customers on board. And uh, it was a hectic kind of, uh, you know, situation for us because uh, both the, you know, initiative came together. Uh, one is like the um, prime minister's assistance to the destitute. The other one is like the salary disbursement under a stimulus package uh, announced by the government. Uh, and, uh, you know, the time was only three weeks time. So that was a big learning for us. And of course, you know, that uh, the, the whole country, the whole world was, in a kind of out of operation we had to stay back at uh, home but again uh, the digitally uh, you know onboarding system helped us a lot to 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 perform this uh, responsibility and uh, uh, you know as you know that uh, we have national id nid uh, you know database so uh, through nid uh, we had the opportunity to acquire all the customers through ekyc so by the time uh, that we were forced to introduce and you know expedite the EQIC processes and minimize the time to open account, so uh, it helped us a lot uh, to open uh, those number of accounts uh, for both the stimulus package and uh, you know prime minister grant. So there are uh, you know in our, in in addition to the government uh, protection social protection program. So uh, these are the two major initiatives that we had to take uh, during the COVID period. Uh, thank you. There's two. Oh, sorry. Um, sorry. I just want to ask you that so the EKYC that was introduced during COVID, it was an emergency measure to allow. Yeah, it was. Yes, yes. It was. Uh, it was. Uh, EKYC was in our process. EKYC was in our discussion. But, uh, you know, we introduced EQIC to the full pleasure during the COVID period because we were forced to introduce. Otherwise, there is no other options to, uh, to acquire this number of, this large number of customers on board during, uh, you know, within the shortest possible time. So we introduced EQIC during the, the, the time. Thank you. Uh, and, and in Bangladesh, so you, you introduced the EQIC during COVID, uh, and then you had the existing data of the factory workers through the factory rosters, right? So you already had the yes. list on who the workers are. And then of course you had your infrastructure to, to disperse those payments. And yes. they were they were yes. cashing out at agents and at um, at your fast track ATMs, right? Yes, uh, we have, uh, you know, in addition, you know, the, the, the other operators, they have only one point, which is like agent points where uh, the customer can uh, cash out. But uh, in addition to uh, agents, so we have a fast track, which is, around uh, 1,200, and most of the fast tracks are located uh, at the industrial uh, area, so that uh, the garments worker or the worker of any factory industry, uh, they, have, they, they can find the fast tracks uh, uh, within their uh, convenient uh, location. So they used to cash out from uh, fast track locations, and we had uh, some other initiatives to uh, make them educate to use these mobile financial services, uh, partnering to purchase uh, mobile top-up, and we, try to identify that what they do actually with the, when they get salaries. They pay their uh, you know, rent for the um, house, uh, for their, uh, you know, uh, houses. Uh, they purchase uh, food, they do mobile top up, uh, they send money to their families. So these are the uh, major areas they use uh, their salaries, uh, you know, on every month. And that's why uh, we have taken some initiatives to make them educate that uh, without having uh, cash out, they can uh, make the transitions digitally. Okay. So that uh, kind of initiative has also been taken. Um, great. So um, we, we, in order to leave a little more time for the audience questions, I think we have quite a, a lot of them. Uh, we'll try to answer as many as we can. Uh, just the last question, if we can um, go to the next slide. Uh, sorry, let, let me just show you the previous slide 
we have some pictures from Cambodia and from uh, Jordan. Just really quickly, these are the these are the cash points uh, and how people are social distancing, and this was all done by the uh, by wing uh, agents. And the next one is just the distribution of uh, in Jordan. Uh, okay, great. This is a quick one. Thank you. Um, and uh, just the last question before we go to uh, audience questions. Can you please tell us in a couple of sentences what were the main challenges to dispersing the social assistance uh, payments and uh, what can your government or the development community do to help? Um, yeah, if you can keep it brief, that would be great. Um, and uh, yeah, Mr. Shigdi, we have you on the line now. Maybe you can start. Yes, uh, thank you so much. Uh, the main challenge that we have faced and we are facing as well, which is uh, a financial literacy, the awareness. Uh, uh, and, uh, you know, this is very important for, uh, for us and for, for them to use because uh, we realize that uh, lack of awareness and financial literacy, uh, it, uh, they face a lot of challenges. They, they face a lot of uh, problems in order to uh, make their transitions, uh, you know, um, uh, when and as and when they required. And uh, number two is like the most of them do not have their own mobile phone, so they use their mobile, uh, uh, you know, mobile phone of their family members. So as such, uh, the you know, the owner of the mobile who you know receives the money, as such, the actual beneficiary, the government worker or the worker of in fact they do not have uh, the immediate access to their uh, you know earnings to their uh, salaries so that that is uh, again uh, one of the challenges so the uh, the initiative that government can uh, you know take is like uh, to to awareness program because of it is most important uh, for them uh, to to aware and to know how to use it and uh, what uh, in order to make uh, our society as a uh, you know less cash society so if we can perform our uh, transitions digitally instead of cash then you know it will be more convenient for them it will be more easier for them and more uh, you know uh, more beneficial uh, for the uh, you know government uh, workers uh, uh, to use the mobile financial services so this is uh, the challenge that we have faced uh, instantly once we opened account for them. Oh, thank you very much. Um, okay, so uh, let's um, let's have uh, PK and then Maha, and then we can go to uh, audience questions. PK, please. Okay, um, I, I think um, we have a very similar, you know, sort of challenge, same as Bangladesh. Um, I mean, in, in terms of emerging market uh, we do some you know uh, facing in terms of the financial literacy in my opinion um, of course you know there's some you know technical you know challenges as well but at you know technical level I mean we can fix you know but when you talk about financial literacy you're talking about uh, thousands of people um, that require a lot of support uh, not only from the you know, government side, but also from the NGO and also from the private sectors. So I have been involved in terms of many projects, um, um, you know, as, as, as a private sector, but Wing has been working recently with the Women World Banking Group as well in terms of, you know, provide sort of the financial literacy into a very, you know, specific segment, mainly we talk on the, the government sectors. Um, so how can we improve and how can we you know, um, provide sort of the financial literacy uh, besides their cash out, we want them to use them on, on other products and services, which mainly, you know, uh, we want them to save. And why this, you know, saving is very important. Um, so take, you know, um, COVID-19 as a, as, a, as a best use case, you know, for those who are underserved and for those who have a very, you know, sort of very low income. So when those COVID hit, um, they lost their job. Some of them, they have been suspended for a month or two months and they have nothing, you know, they, because they are, you know, sit under the, the low income. So whatever they have earned, it is what their daily life for their, for their monthly, you know, supplies on the food. But when they don't have job, so that would be a challenge. But imagine, you know, if we can, 
the wide sort of the financial literacy and, and more so on, you know, like saving, you know, even though um, a small saving, but at least it can help for the last one or two weeks, you know, before um, any government aid or, you know, um, assistance to help in that, in, that, in that period of time. So this is very important uh, in terms of the financial literacy. And also, um, there would be another challenge as well uh, when you talk about um, the underbank. Um, and I think they are mainly in Cambodia. They are, you know, some of them, they are very, you know, older generation and they could not, you know, um, rip or rise. Um, they don't have a smartphone. When, when you talk about, um, you know, um, digital um, wallet, um, of course, you must have a smartphone, but they don't. Um, that sort of the challenges that we have been facing um, uh, currently in order to provide a sort of the assistance. But fortunately, um, we have built the grounds in place, such as, you know, the, 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 the pool ID, which already built and keep updating. And we have Wing as a digital platform. We have Wing as, a, as the biggest network in the country to support um, immediately in the needs of uh, the government. Um, so that's what I'd like to share. Thank you. Thanks so much, BK. Uh, Maha, go ahead. Please. Yeah, maybe maybe challenges is different here a little bit. It's not about financial literacy as much as it is digital financial literacy. One of the examples people use to delete the application of one wallet, believing that the wallet is deleted so they can open another wallet. Uh, other thing, uh, using others' uh, mobile phones, but the main challenge was with the liquidity at the agent side. And with the uh, limitations on people's mobility, we had to solve that problem by enabling uh, around 500 ATM machines in Jordan to, access, to allow cash in and cash out, cardless cash in, cash out for the wallet. Uh, fees on cashing out, uh, the government supported that by uh, asking the banks to waive the fees or the government, they disperse the uh, social benefits with the addition of one JD to cover any associated costs. Uh, feature devices were not a problem in Jordan or a challenge because before even the lockdown, we enabled full interoperable and full solution for feature devices using USSD in Jordan. Um, other challenges, um, uh, yes, uh, the usages. Uh, Jomopay uh, supports uh, full integration with the electronic bill presentment and payment, so more than 350 billers were enabled uh, to pay from the wallet. Before the lockdown, uh, we had the branded companion cards to the wallet, so people used to use the card at the uh, point of sale. But with the lockdown, opened wallets were not uh, able to get the card, so we quickly enabled the QR to allow contactless and safer than any uh, anything that would be contacting. People receiving remittances from outside the country because Jordan relies a lot on inward remittances. So we enabled uh, the inward remittances and outward remittances digitally. But I can still say the main challenge was with liquidity at conventional agents uh, and um, using it for a point of sale, like even with a QR. This is the trick, the uh, knowledge in technology. So oh, if I just scan QR or if I do that, would it help or not? That was the digital financial literacy was the main challenge in addition to liquidity. Well, thank you, Maha. Um, we, we can start with the audience questions. And, and thank you thank you very much, Maha Piki and Mr. Shigde. We, we do appreciate your time. Um, Maha, while you're on the line, can you please answer one of the questions is how um, – let me just look at the question. Uh, what was the process to conduct KYC for refugees? So. Yeah. Uh, in refugees, because we started to face the huge influx of Syrian refugees early in 2012 and 11, so uh, we enabled the UNSCR, enabled the IRIS, biometric IRIS, with prepaid cards. They were enabled on 
ATM machines. So uh, IRIS uh, biometric uh, enables uh, verification and validation of, of refugees. How we recognize them, uh, UNHCR is the official state of refugees in the world. And in Jordan, we have, in addition to that, Jordanian ID card that is like one side is UNHCR, the other side is the government. If you have two registrations, you become more eligible to more of financial services. If you only have the UNHCR, you are uh, uh, allowed to limited financial services, but with the biometric, the IRS biometric for the refugees. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, we have time for a few more questions. Let's see. Um, once, once you have adopted the, what, what, um, you're starting to serve the lower income customers and in some occasions certain providers have already been serving them, but now they're a new segment of customers that have been onboarded up on your platform. Do you see commercial viability of that segment, uh, keeping them as, as long-term customers? Is that, what are the plans for, for that? Um, in, yeah, this part, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I, I don't see that is very feasible and sustainable business. Uh, unfortunately, it's not profitable, especially in Jordan. We have seven licensed PSPs serving the country is only uh, 10 million with now uh, more than 50% financially included. So I don't believe that number is uh, would make it feasible for them. Um, so I'm skeptical about the business viability for the future, and uh, you cannot put uh, uh, high fees on this segment of the society. So whether they get kind of support or they reach to more uh, sustainable business model to serve their needs, even with more usages. Yeah. Although many of them, they are finding uh, some kind of uh, good revenues, uh, especially that, uh, as I mentioned, more than 350 billers are allowed through all wallets, uh, uh, e-commerce platforms, and, uh, and uh, conventional points of sales. We're working now with them on a better uh, business interoperable in terms of interchange fees. So maybe it will become later on, hopefully. But I don't think uh, the market is fragmented. This is, from my point of view, over served by this number of PSPs. Thank you. Um, Pika, what, what do you think? I mean, I did, you did mention earlier that you do want the, the poor ID customers to be able to not cash out and use, use the wallet more. Do you see this as a commercially viable segment for you? Um, hello? Can, can you yes. ask the question yes. again? I, I got a lot um, from the start. So I was asking, do you do you see the the poor ID customers as a commercially viable segment for you after after the stipend or the G2P transfers end? Is this a segment that you would like to continue serving? I I think um, from from two perspectives. Um, one, I I think we want to to sort of. Uh, bring the financial inclusion to them and why we do so because that's one of our win vision. We want to bring every Cambodian with, you know, financial access and provide convenient product uh, related to whatever, you know, they need. So I think uh, this COVID-19 um, has a, has uh, created um, a very good, a very good opportunity for them. You know, one, um, they, they now they start to be aware of you know using a um, sort of hybrid in terms of digital financing uh, financial service. Uh, why I'm saying hybrid because um, uh, like I mentioned because for those who are underserved um, they also need assistance which is we use our wing agent which is the human ATM I would say you know to assist them in terms of um, adopting into a digital transaction. Um, so I think we just make on the next step in terms of, you know, literacy and make them, you know, aware of that they can do more than the, than the, than just the cash out. Like I mentioned, you know, um, you can save, you know, even a dollar, even a five dollar, you know, Cambodia is a dollar, dollarized market. So, you know, then you can save. Um, I don't think, you know, the, 
the commercial bank would be interested in those uh, small microservices, but something you know like Wing as a fintech company who have the best reach in the country, we would be able to collect all of those deposits. And and also uh, second, uh, I think the product that would be more relevant, which is the micro insurance. Um, this is you know in order to protect the families, in order to protect the person um, who lost probably the life, who lost the job. This is something. I would say it's a commercial um, uh, commercially we we can do, um, but we just need some you know programs and activity um, uh, you know to to be implemented um, in the near future. You know maybe you know when the the COVID nineteen gone um, or during the COVID nineteen we can do something you know together in terms of education in terms of the awareness of all the products and services. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, and uh, Mr. Victor, I, I would like to ask you as well, if, uh, we, we're running out of time though, and, um, but I believe that the segment that you're serving with the G2P was factory workers, and that is a, a viable segment for you because you've been serving them for, for a long time. Yeah, thank you so much, Dana. Um, as far as the viability is concerned, uh, in fact, in Bangladesh, the model that, that we follow to operate uh, uh, mobile financial services, it's not still as a whole viable but again this is that is not the only commitment our commitment is to uh, to offer this kind of services to the unbanked and we want to bring them into into formal and banking channels or final formal channels legitimate channels uh, we want to ensure that uh, uh, the grassroots level uh, uh, in the country uh, have the access uh, to finance uh, access to perform their financial transactions uh, uh, through digital means. So that is other other commitments, other objectives. Uh, the financial viability is one one aspect, but there are other social uh, importance and aspect uh, in it. So yes, uh, as far as the small denomination is concerned, you understand that the operating cost is uh, much higher than um, the, the, the revenue that we generate. Uh, and the model, uh, there are, as I told you, as I mentioned, that, you know, uh, 20, uh, 1.8 million uh, agents are working um, for us across the country. So th they have their, uh, you know, opportunity to, to make some money out of it. So there are some other uh, social impacts in it. Uh -huh. So as a whole, it is viable. We are, we are trying to make it justified in a viable business. Though we are not making uh, money out of it. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. Well, um, we're we're out of time. We'll, we'll try and follow up with the outstanding questions that we haven't been able to answer. Thank you very much to our speakers. Thanks very much to yeah, Martin no. for organizing. Yes. Yeah. If you allow me, just just one minute to share with the audience an idea that we implemented in Jordan, which we call digital experiment. It's a kind of intervention in the current business awareness and communication strategies to ensure that any strategic uh, development or investment is well informed. So we, we tested uh, some hypotheses and uh, theories to make sure that they work out. And after that, we conducted full survey with IPSOS to find out that our intervention in educational and other communication strategies yielded out and reaped good benefits, raising the satisfaction of national age beneficiaries from less than 50% to 82%. Oh, wow. Yeah. With 86% confirming that even after the government would stop their social assistance, they would continue using the mobile wallet. Oh, that's, that's wonderful. Uh, thanks, thanks for sharing, Maha. Um, Thank you. Well, thank you for your participation. Thank you for joining us. Uh, if you have any additional questions, you can send them to globalpartnerships at usaid.gov. We'll try and follow up with outstanding questions. Um, appreciate you seeing you here, and uh, see you next time. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a good day. Uh, thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.